topic is aortic regurgitation. There is a retrograde flow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle. And this is a result of an incompetent aortic valve. The pathology can be at the level of the valve or it can be at the level of the aortic root or it can involve both the aortic root and the valve. Conditions such as the dissection of the ascending aorta, the infective endocarditis and trauma uh, reduce uh, aortic regurgitation more acutely. Out of the many etiologies, uh, some are more common as uh, infective endocarditis, rheumatic disease, bicuspid aortic valve, myxomatous degeneration, systemic hypertension, Marfan syndrome, dissection of ascending aorta. Other less common uh, etiologies would include the collagen vascular diseases such as the ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, giant cell aortitis, uh, reader syndrome, and uh, conditions such as syphilitic aortitis and traumatic injury to the aortic valve. In acute AR, there is a sudden large regurgitant volume on the left ventricle, and uh, due to this, there is a quick increase in uh, left ventricular and diastolic pressures and the left atrial pressures. Although the left ventricle tries to maintain the stroke volume um, and cardiac output, uh, but, uh, but what happens is often it's inadequate. And uh, as a result of increased left ventricular and diastolic pressure and the left atrial pressure, there's development of pulmonary edema. And as a result of reduced coronary perfusion pressures and increase in myocardial oxygen demand, there is uh, often myocardial ischemia. And uh, as a result of decrease in stroke volume and cardiac output, there is often cardiogenic shock. In chronic AR, what's happening is that over a period of time, the regurgitant volume load leads to an increase in the left ventricular dilation and subsequent uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. And uh, the compensatory changes, uh, uh, such as the increase in left ventricular dilation, left ventricular hypertrophy, would try to maintain uh, low left ventricular and diastolic pressures and uh, maintain the stroke volume and uh, coronary perfusion pressures. But over time, there is a further left ventricular dilation and contractile dysfunction. As a result, there is an increase in left ventricular and diastolic pressure and a reduced ejection fraction, more stroke volume and cardiac output. And due to marked uh, hypertrophy of the left ventricle and a reduction in coronary perfusion pressure, uh, folks often present with angina and uh, congestive heart failure due to a forward decrease in cardiac output and also due to congestion. The overall picture that presents uh, in folks with acute AR is very different from mm, the folks who have uh, chronic AR. Part of the reason being that the uh, dimensions of the uh, left ventricle and the left atrium are normal in size in, um, in acute uh, AR. It's mostly a situation in which the um, pulse pressures are pretty much narrow and uh, the aortic diastolic pressures are not reduced much. The pulses are small volume pulses and the murmurs are unimpressive and at times absent. So here we have a patient uh, who might present with cardiogenic shock and dyspnea and uh, the folks may have tachycardia 
and the pulse pressures are often not wide as mentioned before because the stroke volume is reduced and uh, and if there is a murmur being heard then it's often very brief and it's a soft diastolic murmur which can be heard around third left intercostal space and uh, there could be a systolic flow murmur that can be heard and uh, one needs to also look in for the cause of aortic regurgitation and look for situations uh, out of which aortic regurgitation has happened such as aortic dissection or infective endocarditis chronic error would produce uh, bounding pulses uh, you know, reflecting wide pulse pressures what happens is basically a large stroke volume forward increases the systolic blood pressure and then because of the regurgitation of the blood back into the left ventricle there is a decrease in the diastolic blood pressure and white uh, pulses uh, the white pulse pressure basically is basically found in other situations as well such as in patent ductus arteriosus in arteriovenous fistulas in um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in uh, situations such as uh, thyrotoxicosis cirrhosis pregnancy fever anemia a water hammer pulse is uh, is basically that's referring to um, a kind of uh, slapping quality when the hand is held up and the murmur in chronic AR is basically a diastolic decrescendo murmur which is uh, heard best at the left sternum border in a person who's sitting and leaning forward and at the end of expiration and then there could be a systolic flow murmur that could be heard and then an Austin Flint murmur is another murmur that's associated with this condition it's basically a mid to late a diastolic murmur and uh, basically there is a high left ventricular end diastolic pressure and an adverse hemodynamic situation it's uh, when in diastole the mitral valve uh, leaflets get impacted by the aortic regurgitant the streams and this is heard over the apex then there is a left ventricular heave and the and the left ventricular impulse is uh, displaced downwards and to the left there is an s3 heard over the apex and uh, in acute aortic insufficiency or regurgitation the wide pulse pressures and large stroke volumes are absent and uh, therefore uh, the signs such as the Corrigan's pulse, Hill sign, the Mussets and the Rosiers and Quinkies and Trobies and the Muller sign, they're all absent. Chest x-rays would show widened mediastinum and cardiomegaly pulmonary edema in situations of chronic AR they would be left ventricular hypertrophy and in folks with acute aortic regurgitation there might be a, a presentation where there is pulmonary edema but with a normal cardiac silhouette ecg findings would be pertaining tachycardia and in situations of chronic aortic regurgitation findings related to left ventricular hypertrophy and left atrial enlargements and in situations where there is an aortic root abscess there could be a conduction block echocardiography could show the anterior mitral leaflets fluttering during a diastole and um, left ventricular hypertrophy in situations of chronic aortic regurgitation and uh, along with that doppler studies can help uh, quantify regurgitant volumes and regurgitant orifice TTE can help look into the leaflets their numbers and the morphology 
the left ventricular systolic function and the left ventricular dimensions at the end of the systole and at the end of the diastole and also looking into situations of endocarditis or uh, aortic dissection and also looking at the aortic root dimensions CEE can be utilized in situations where where a bicuspid valve is not very clear on TTE and uh, in situations of aortic dissections in situations where there's a aortic root abscess or if there is an endocarditis Catheterization is very helpful in situations where there's a coexistent uh, coronary artery disease and uh, it also helps to look at the left ventricular function and the left ventricular pressure assessments and also to have an assessment of the severity of the AR and uh, particularly in situations where the non-invasive imaging is not very clear. So MRI and CT can be utilized in situations to have an assessment of the severity of AR where echo assessment is not very clear and then uh, also to have an uh, evaluation of the aortic dimensions and uh, in situations such as aortic dissection, to have an evaluation under those situations, MR and MRI and CT can be helpful. Medical treatment has a limited role in uh, AR and uh, can be utilized for treating the CHF and uh, long-term vasodilator therapy can be utilized for delaying uh, the need for aortic valve replacements in situations where folks have severe aortic regurgitation but a normal left ventricular function and uh, they are asymptomatic or it may have some role as a short-term therapy uh, for uh, basically improving the hemodynamics in folks uh, who have severe heart failure and severe left ventricular dysfunction just before surgery so as a short-term therapy it can be utilized in that situation or it can be utilized as a chronic therapy in folks who have severe aortic stenosis and have symptoms and uh, and are basically not surgical candidates and they may have left ventricular dysfunction but are not surgical candidates so in those situations it can be utilized as chronic therapy And if uh, endocarditis is there, then appropriate antibiotic coverage has to be given. From surgical standpoint, uh, several factors such as the NYHA functional class, left ventricular dysfunction and chronicity determine the operative and post-operative mortality. And uh, acute severe AR is treated surgically. And... Uh, Several uh, other indications for surgical treatment would be in folks having severe AR and who are symptomatic and in folks who have chronic severe AR and left ventricular systolic dysfunction and are asymptomatic and in folks who are undergoing CABG or surgery on the aorta or other valves and have chronic severe AR. And for folks uh, who have aortic root dilatation, um, that can be repaired at the time of uh, aortic valve repair. From a surgical standpoint, there are several factors such as the NYHA functional class, left ventricular dysfunction, and chronicity that determine the operative and the post-operative mortality. Uh, acute severe uh, AR is treated surgically, and if there is an aortic root dilation, that can be repaired at the time of aortic valve replacement. Several other indications for surgical management would be
from surgical standpoint, uh, there are several factors such as the NYHA functional class, left ventricular dysfunction, and chronicity that determine the operative and postoperative mortality. Acute severe AR is uh, treated surgically. Aortic root dilatation can be repaired at the time of an AVR. And uh, several indications for aortic valve replacement would include folks who have severe AR uh, and are symptomatic uh, irrespective of uh, their left ventricular systolic function or would include folks who have chronic severe AR and left ventricular systolic dysfunction and are asymptomatic or folks who are undergoing CABG or surgery on aorta or for other valves and have chronic severe aortic regurgitation.